Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about reference graphics cards versus custom graphics cards from the various manufacturers with a special emphasis on the Sapphire Radeon 7970 OC with their Dual X cooler. So what we're gonna do is we're going to compare this to what is a reference card. We're gonna explain the difference between a reference card and a custom card, as well as show you guys the tangible improvements that can be made to your computing experience by going with something like this one. So here I have with me a Galaxy GeForce GTX 680. This is a reference card, so at launch, at the launch, especially of a high-end graphics card, usually every board partner, whether your name is Sapphire or XFX or Galaxy or EVGA, whatever the case may be, everyone's card is the same. They're going to have the same clock speed, the same PCB, that is the printed circuit board upon which the chips are placed. They're going to have the same components on them, they're going to have the same cooler, and usually the major differences are going to be in terms of any bundles, whether it's a game or uh, accessories, cable the sticker on it, as well as the support that the manufacturer is willing to put behind it, whether that's a local RMA depot or a longer warranty or whatever else the case may be. So here I have a reference 7970. This uses AMD's cooler. This one, this particular one is an OEM AMD engineering sample, but you've probably seen these with different stickers on them or whatever else. It uses a six pin and an eight pin uh, power connector. It has a blower fan, so that it means that the air gets exhausted out the back of the case. And the difference that it has between this and a custom card is usually one of a couple of different things or both. So number one is non-reference cards will often use different coolers. So you can see right here, uh, if you want to zoom in, the Dual X cooler uses two 92 millimeter fans as well as five heat pipes in order to achieve its cooling performance, which as you'll see in a little bit, is significantly better than the reference 7970. The other thing that can be different on a custom card is the PCB, whether that means the printed circuit board itself, if they want to add more power phases, uh, more or less memory, whatever else they want to try and do. In this case, this particular card uses a reference PCB with a custom cooler, but you can also see custom PCBs with a custom cooler and then reference PCBs with a reference cooler. So I hope that clears up what a reference card is. With a non-reference or custom card, usually the manufacturer is designing a cooler, a PCB, or both to make their card stand out from the competition. Now the actual performance of the cards, especially when you're talking two cards with a reference PCB, is going to come down to a couple of things. So how much RAM it has on that PCB. In this case, both of these cards are 3 gig cards and we're running at 1080p resolution, so RAM is pretty much not going to be a factor. The next thing is the clock speed. So this Dual X card is actually slightly overclocked. So what you'll see here in our Battlefield 3 example is that the Dual X card actually just marginally, this is the Dual X card, this is the reference card, marginally outperforms in average FPS the reference card in our benchmark. We can just call this within margin of error pretty much. So in terms of a performance delta, there's not much. However, if you're into tuning performance yourself and you want to overclock the card, we were able to get our Dual X card up to 1.1 gigahertz on the core as well as cranking the memory up in MSI Afterburner. And by doing that, we were able to get these overclocked results and we got a more than 10%, about a 12, 13% performance improvement on the card with only a marginal increase in temperatures. Now in terms of temperatures, at idle, they were pretty consistent. So the reference card ran at about 39 degrees at idle, whereas the Dual X in both its non-overclocked and its overclocked state ran at about 32, 33 degrees at idle. However, when we get to the low temperatures, that's where the difference really starts to take off. So our power consumption you can see is pretty similar across the board. Okay, our performance scales as we overclock and is slightly higher with the stock overclock. So these are our performance bars right here. But let's talk temps. So our load temperatures were even at a 1.1 gigahertz overclock, more than 10 degrees cooler. This is in a real gaming load versus our reference card. Now, this is a bit of an exaggeration because we're running on an open test platform. So what that means is that this card has the benefit of exhausting air directly out of the case. 
in a cramped case, that's a huge advantage because you're not recycling that hot air. However, if your case has decent ventilation, such as if you have an Antec 1100 or some kind of a gaming case like that, this is going to be a huge advantage because it will perform very similarly to how it does on an open test bench. So I hope this has been educational, giving you guys a glimpse into what you can achieve with one of these Dual X cards, as well as explaining the differences between reference cards and non-reference cards from the various manufacturers. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips on the Sapphire 7970 OC with the Dual X cooler, and don't forget to subscribe.